Hello everyone and welcome to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty hobby enthused channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for sticking around with me through my summer break, my vacation from technology, um, exploring, uh, traveling, uh, relaxing, just taking time to recharge my batteries and I have to say I feel amazing and I feel super blessed to be able to do such things as drive across the country to visit family and come back and just chill. <laughs> so um, yeah this is like I said my channel about things that I like to do in my free time so knitting, crocheting, spinning yarn, weaving, gardening, sewing, I, I, the list goes on because I keep trying new things. So it's also about exploring and learning and trying new things. So I hope that you enjoy today's episode. I do have two months worth of stuff to share with you <laughs> um, because my last episode was about what I made in June. So I have July and August to catch you up on. But before I do that, I did want to share with you some flowers from my garden in the front yard. I've got um, some flower beds in the front yard and then in the backyard it's pretty much all vegetables and fruit. Um, but in the front yard the flowers are blooming and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I have um, these red flowers are dahlias and I just love how they look like a, just a ball uh, and then when you get up close you can see all the petals and it's absolutely beautiful um, some of these are wilting now so I apologize they're not on <laughs> their best display um, but there's red there's uh, I love this one with the white and it's like a deep burgundy um, there are some pink ones just starting to bloom, some purple ones just starting to bloom, uh, lots of red ones, which is why I felt I could bring some inside. And then these white flowers are from my hostas. So some of them make white flowers, some of them make purple. And so I just thought it would be nice to have some flowers in the house. Um... So yeah, the flower bed is doing great. I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> so why has it been two months since I recorded an episode? Well, <laughs> uh, I went on a big vacation and got back, was all set to record, things came up. And then I just got really into relaxing and chilling out and not recording. So that's what happened. <laughs> um, so at the beginning of July, right after I recorded for, you know, what I made in June, uh, we went on a vacation to Michigan. And by the way, I forgot to say in my intro that I'm coming to you from the greater Seattle area in Washington state. So we drove from Pacific time zone to Eastern time zone, <laughs> pretty much all the way across the country, although not to the Atlantic coast, but to the Great Lakes. Uh, and we went camping, we went to go see, you know, touristy sites, got to visit family, and we took our new pop-up camper with us and we just made a whole two and a half, three week vacation out of it and it was amazing. That was awesome. Came back, unpacked, you know, did all these things and I go to sit down to record and uh, kind of a family emergency. So uh, we have family that lives in Northern California and just like every summer there are forest fires. Uh, so before you start thinking the worst, everyone is fine and no one's house burned down. At least, I mean, houses did burn down, but 
not our family members. So thank goodness. Uh, but they did have to evacuate. So uh, they came up here. And that was right at the beginning of August. So I was going to sit down to record and we get a phone call saying, hey, can we come up there? And yes, absolutely. So, uh, so we dropped everything and, um, you know, set up guest rooms and, and everything and had them here for a week, week and a half, somewhere around there. Um, and a-okay to go back home, best case scenario that could have happened. Uh, yeah, everyone's fine and it, it's great. Uh, but it, <laughs> then it was like the middle of August when I felt like, okay, now I can actually sit down and record. And it just didn't feel right. It's, I don't know. You know how it is? Those of you who record videos, <laughs> I don't know. It was already the middle of August. I thought, oh, I'll just wait until the end. So here we are. <laughs> I know you'll understand, and I, I so appreciate your patience and for sticking around and waiting for this video. So what I do is every month on these videos where I say, oh, this is what I created this month, I also give something away. So because this video is for two months worth of content, I am going to draw two winners for the giveaway. So stick around till the end of the episode to find out if you're a winner uh, of the giveaway. So I super appreciate you all and for sticking around with me, uh, especially since I didn't give you any notice about that. Uh, but I really appreciate you. So. Before we left for vacation, and that was like July 5th, yes, it was July 5th, it was right after July 4th, we really need to stop going on vacation the day after July 4th. Now, July 4th is national holiday with lots of fireworks, uh, people barbecuing, um, lots of alcohol and food. It's just a big party and it's loud and noisy all night long. And we're trying to sleep to get up early to go on a long drive. Whatever. We do it. <laughs> we need to stop doing that. But, uh, yeah, that's when we left. And before we left, I had been processing cotton and I put up a cotton video here on the channel of going from the, the you know cotton picked off the plant to being processed and spun into yarn so when we came back that was the first thing that I gravitated toward was spinning up my cotton so <laughs> I did finish it I made a video about it and I have here my uh, finished product. So uh, so I have two balls here and uh, total I have about 366 yards of yarn and I'd say it's a it's about a fingering weight at a glance. Um, this ball definitely looks thicker than this ball in terms of the um, yarn. Uh, but it's a two ply. I spun the singles in the clockwise direction and plied counterclockwise. So in this ball I have 166 yards. In this ball, I have 156 yards. See, my tag is stuck in the middle. And I did measure grist, because I'm interested in that. Uh, but yeah, so the grist on this one is a little over 2,000 yards per pound. And the grist on this one is a little under 2,000 yards per pound, which does match my, this is, this is thinner than this one. Uh, but yeah, uh, both of these are in the fingering weight um, <laughs> range. 
words today are really difficult. Perfect day to podcast, September 1st. Um, anyway, so uh, my plan with this, I, I think I mentioned this, but uh, this is cotton my mom sent me. And so I thought it would be great to make her something out of this cotton yarn. And so uh, what I'm thinking about doing is pairing this with some commercial cotton just to make it go a little bit farther. Uh, but I have this cotton yarn from Hobby. Uh, it's called Rainbow and it's 100% cotton and it's this nice soft blue. And I was thinking of weaving a couple of towels and doing like a waffle stitch potentially. I, I've, I've only ever just woven, just plain straight um, weaving. So it would be interesting to try a pattern for weaving. I don't know. Uh, but that's my thought is to do that. And so I'd love to get this on the loom soon. Um, because I know uh, my parents are planning a visit out here soon so it'd be nice to be able to just give them to her <laughs> before she leaves uh, as a as a gift so we'll see if if I can get that done uh, but yeah that is all the spinning that I have to show you. I have been washing a lot of fleeces. So since we've gotten back from our vacation, it has been 80 degrees and up. We had two days, two days of it being in the seventies, but it's freaking hot. It's 80 degrees and above. And I just, is hot. <laughs> now, I am trying to grow cotton out in my front yard garden <laughs> and they love hot weather so it's great for them but it's just been crazy hot which is also good for drying um, things outside. So we've been uh, you know kind of hanging up some of our laundry outside like our uh, socks to dry um, I've been washing wool, putting it out to dry. Um, I, I blocked a sweater and I set it outside and it dried in one evening <laughs> being outside. So I guess there are perks to it being warm in the summer, but, uh, I'm not a fan overall. So anyway, I've been washing a lot of wool, so I have not been spinning, um, very much because it's just been about um, all the dirty wool that I have, and it was all dirty. I was storing it dirty, which is a no-no. I should not be doing that. Um, so I still, I'm in the middle of a batch of BFL right now, and then I've got three more bags here that I'm looking at to finish off. So I've gotten, I finished washing the Cheviot, Cheviot, I don't know how to say that word. Uh, so I have one bag of that. I have two bags of Jacob that I wash. I have BFL that's halfway done. So I've gotten through three and a half bags of wool and I have three more in here to get through. So it's a lot of wool. Like I said, I was storing all of it dirty. Yeah, so I will have a lot to spin. I've just been trying to use the heat while I have it for a good purpose. <laughs> and that would be helping me to dry my wool outside so I don't have to take up the dining room table with fans trying to dry it all out. So, yep. So that's all I have for spinning is some cotton, but you know what, I'm really happy with how it came out and I'm super excited to weave with it. So the rest is all knitting, all of it. <laughs> um, so for our road trip uh, from Washington to Michigan, 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 <laughs> uh, 
I brought with me three projects. I finished none of them on the road. I did work on them a little bit, but for the most part we were, um, you know, swapping out drivers and talking and looking at the scenery and, and I just uh, didn't get as much editing done in the car as I thought I would. But also, uh, interesting fact about me, not really interesting, uh, but I do get car sick. So it, it, yeah. So I brought things that have patterns to pay attention to. Uh, so I couldn't just knit round and round and round on a sock while looking out the window. I had to keep looking down. So it wasn't eh, quite conducive to a road trip, but Nonetheless, I made, uh, I made progress. I did post a couple pictures on Instagram when we were at various rest stops and the scenery was beautiful. Uh, and I, I took some pictures, but uh, yeah, so I brought with me two pairs of socks and a hat. They are now finished, <laughs> but they were not finished um, early. Oh, I should say the cotton sp spinning, I did finish in July. And this pair of socks I finished in July, and that was it for July. <laughs> um, so this is a pair of socks for um, Michael, my husband, and they're knit out of Patton's Croy. The main color is 50s stripes, and the contrast heel and toe are, uh, the colorway is muslin, but it's, it's also Patton's Croy. So I played around with ribbing on these socks and I knit them cuff down, which is my favorite. I did a heel flap and gusset, but I tried a new heel flap. This is the episode about trying all new things. <laughs> um, so this, this is a heel flap with a, with a gusset, right? Uh, but this is eye of partridge heel, which I have tried before. And this time it actually looks like I have partridge, uh, but it's I partridge with a garter stitch edge. And I wasn't sure I would like this, but I feel like picking up stitches on this edge was way easier than um, other heel flaps I've done where you you slip the first stitch or slip the last stitch depending on what you're doing. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so I really like them. And now that I've shown them to you, I can put them in Michael's sock drawer. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep, I love them. They're really cool. And like I said, I really like this heel flap, so I think this is my new favorite. This is going to be my new go-to for a while. The heel of 2022 is I have partridge heel flap with garter edge. Uh, but yeah, so one finished pair of socks. And uh, that was all I had for July. Then we move into August and... I wasn't feeling the socks, so I did another project. And then I came back to the socks. But I'm just going to show you all the socks that I finished so that you can see them. So the other pair of socks that I brought on our road trip was this pair. And this pair is for me. And so I uh, did a little detail here. It's just a couple pearls, a knit, and a couple pearls. That's it. Um, but I like to carry it up into the ribbing section, so it's it looks seamless. Uh, so I tried more new things. So again, I had to look at patterns in the car because I had a new heel that I hadn't done before. Um, I had to count my rows of repeats here on the ribbing. So lots of tally marks on scratch paper in the car. This pair, I decided to knit toe up, which is not my usual method. So 
I feel like whenever you're doing something that's not your usual method, you have to pay more attention, right? So I did toe up, uh, standard toe, and I tried a different heel. So I don't know if you can tell, this is a reverse strong heel. So it's not a short row heel. It's not a heel flap and gusset. It's different. Um, so this is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about the yarn in a, in a minute. So, uh, so you knit up here, then you have to know where to, uh, where to start the heel here. So I watched a video and it was what I was suspecting I needed to do based on the number of stitches you cast on for your sock is going to determine how many rows you do in this heel because you basically decrease down to what like four stitches um so the more stitches you start with the more rows you need here to decrease down so it's just a little gauge math of measuring my gauge here and then um so then if I'm doing this many rows, how many inches would that be so that I know where to start doing that? Okay. So there was all that thinking to do. Yeah. Okay. So I figured it out. No problem. It is a good fit. Okay. Then there's a little bit of a gusset on this direction, decreasing on the top half instead of the bottom half. Oh, cool. So I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to try this, a, like a completely different heel than what I'm used to knitting. And it was fun to figure out. It was fun to try. But I hate knitting it. I really do. I hate knitting it. And I'll tell you why I hate knitting it. Um, because the calculations are not hard. Once I figured out what I needed to do, it was fine. Um, and I could do it again and, and it'd be great. But here's what I don't like. You knit this as a little flap back and forth in rows. And then you got to come back and pick up stitches along the edge here. And it was a major pain to pick up stitches because you don't slip the stitch on the edge or anything like that to make the edge clean. So trying to pick up for, because they want you to pick up for every single row that you've knit. And it was finicky as all get out. Like I'd go in with my needle, loop the yarn, and it'd keep falling off. And so it took me like five tries every single stitch to try to, and I got the crochet hook and then it'd get caught on everything. And it was a major pain in the butt. So on one of these socks, yep, this one. The gusset is way shorter. There's like barely a gusset here compared to this one, which has more. Because I just like picked up every other row instead because I was so over it. <laughs> so these two socks are different. They do not have the same um, girth around the sock here because I did not pick up as many stitches on this one because it was a major pain in my butt. So, I don't like it. I don't like the reverse strong heel because I found picking up stitches to just be the worst thing ever. <laughs> As opposed to the garter stitch edge, which was amazing and easy. So, um, so what I am going to do is wear these socks. These are for me. And I am going to compare the feel because that is also very important. Um, I'm going to see how these feel feel because if I love the way these feel on my heel yep uh, then I will find a way to make this better but if I do not care for the way that they feel there is no point <laughs> um, yeah okay other than that I played around with um, not only these these stitches here and the heel 
but I took two colors of Patton's Croix yarn and I striped them. So the same way I do that in my baby blankets, uh, like my favorite baby blanket and my countryside baby blanket, I'll put links to those patterns down below. Uh, <laughs> I took two self-striping yarns of Patton's Croix and striped them together. So the two colors, let me grab what's left of them. So this is amethyst stripes and this one is uh, cameo colors. And I just, I have one ball of each, first of all, and I didn't really like the colors on their own. I just thought this is, this is too much and this is just too much. But I thought they both have this element of pink in them. Pink is my least favorite color. And I don't know, I just thought maybe there's a way I could blend these together that would make it okay. Right? I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's like a, um, just more gothic, I think, without being like, hi, I'm pink. So... <laughs> Now, there is a section on each sock where it was pink on pink. So that section is very pink. But I love how the dark and the blue um, just kind of, it makes it more pur purple. And so it's less pink and red and in your face and more like purple and, and muted. So I do love that idea of uh, striping together two self-striping yarns uh, just to create a, a, new, um, a new fabric, a new colorway. So that was fun. And since it was striping every other round, there's no um, like floats to carry. You know, it's not color work. It's just switching color each round. So that part was easy everything else about these socks was difficult so that was not my favorite project and then i finished another pair of socks these are also from michael so he told me that he loves there's this pair of socks I knit for him. I think it was the third pair of socks I knit for him that are his absolute favorite. They're all black, <laughs> except for the heels, toes, and I don't know about the cuff, but, um, and they're worn out on the bottom. Like the ball of the foot is just blasted out, non-existent. Um, the heel is starting to go. It's knit out of Patton's Quarry yarn. They have lasted five years. Yeah. Um, amazing. But they're his favorite. So they're the first ones he puts on after we wash socks. So he's, he's always wearing them. So I was like, what is it about these socks that you love so much? You know, is it because they're black? Is it because of the pattern? Is it the heel, you know, and I, he doesn't know all the technical stuff, but it, trying to, to get down to the nitty gritty there. Um, it's the two by two rib. It's the two by two rib. The fact that it hugs his foot and his leg and it stays up. Um, I think it helps that they're in all black because then they're easy to wear with his black shoes and black pants and things like that. Um, but okay. All right. I'm just going to knit him a whole bunch of socks with two by two ribbing. So after that conversation, I cast on these. <laughs> They're not all black, <laughs> uh, but they are two by two ribbing. Um, now I did experiment a little and I put one by one ribbing at the top. I think he's probably going to want just two by two ribbing the whole way. Excuse me, because that's what the other pair of socks has. But anyway, um, this is also Patton's Croix, <laughs> my favorite sock yarn. 
Um, so the main color is zebra stripes and this again is muslin. So I did the eye partridge, partridge heel flap with garter stitch edge. So I knit these cuff down, which is my preferred method. And, um, oh yeah, and the toe is also muslin. So yeah, that's what I did. I did one by one rib for 15 rounds, two by two rib the rest of the way. And this time I did do a rounded toe, which I thought was going to be more interesting, but it's not. Um, so with a standard toe, you decrease every other round down to, uh, depending on the size sock you do, I go down to 12 stitches. With a rounded toe, you decrease every other round, which is the same, but you only go down to half the stitches you start with. That's it. I thought the decreases would like go to every round. Anyway. Okay, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> so I love these socks. I thought the zebra stripes would not be even. I thought they'd be more like a zebra and a bit sporadic, but they are even stripes. Look at these. Yeah right? I love these socks and I have to knit myself a pair, <laughs> but I'm going to do one by one rib because I don't like the two by two and how suctiony it is and clingy, but Michael loves that. So that'll be an easy way to tell our socks apart. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yep. So I finished two pairs of socks for Michael. <clears throat> and one pair of socks for myself. So the other project I took on the road with me was a hat. And so this hat, I started, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks before we went on our trip. And I cast it on partly because this would be like mindless knitting in the car. And then you know what I did? I did all the mindless knitting at home, got to the crown decreases, and then packed it on a car ride. So this didn't get worked on at all on our road trip. I finished it after we got back. <laughs> um, but this is, uh, so the hat is Barley by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I knit this out of my hand spun yarn. I love this hand spun yarn. Um, this is, what is this? It's from, oh, this is from Wound Up Fiber Arts, isn't it? This is Moonwalk. Yes. <laughs> this is from Wound Up Fiber Arts. The colorway is Moonwalk. Um, it's a 100% superwash merino. And, um, so she dyes them in, uh, I bought a braid. I think that's all she does are braids. But, uh, oh my gosh, it spun up so nicely. And so I made myself a barley. And it is very slouchy. I did not, there are instructions in the pattern for like, to make it slouchy, like the models are wearing, add more rounds to this. I did not do that. Which makes me wonder, do I have just... I didn't think my head was that small, but whatever. Um, I love the colors. This is so cool. Uh, the trouble will be um, keeping this out of the washing machine. No, it's super wash merino. So it should be fine. Yes. That's right. I didn't want to use it for socks because it didn't have nylon. That's right. Oh, it's so soft and it's so beautiful and I love hand spun yarn. It is so cool. <laughs> oh, anyway, yep, easy peasy. But like I said, I did all of the easy round and round and round and round uh, at home. And yeah, so crown decreases got done when we got back from vacation. 
So, yeah. So in between the, well, I knit these two pairs of socks before I finish this one. So, like, I already have gone on and on and on about these socks. They were a lot of thinking. So, I needed a mental break, but not a mindless one. I just needed to use my creative juices on something that I feel like would be rewarding, because that sock was not being rewarding. Uh, so, I... <laughs> knit up coasters <laughs> I'm using one of them here yep so uh, I did this one first excuse the uh, little bit of coffee on here they have been in use being loved so these are double knit and uh, and then I did this one was next, and this one. So I love this uh, buffalo check plaid. Uh, sometimes I'll call it Uper plaid, <laughs> uh, but I love. I just love that pattern, and so I have elements of this in my living room. And we needed more coasters, and so I just whipped some up. So I took notes, I made these color work charts, and then I was like, well, three is not enough, so let me knit three more, but I'll do it in gold. Um, this is actually, I used this yarn to knit a sweater for myself. <laughs> and so this is using some of the leftovers. So there's six. And I totally fell in love with this and thought, oh, okay, all right, I have to release this as a pattern. So it is up, it's available. And I created tutorial videos to go along with it. And those videos are also available here on this YouTube channel. Well, I'd already made these six, so I had to make another one to make the tutorial videos. So here's the one I made in the <laughs> tutorial videos. And so I went with this green. And then while I was editing those videos, I made another one. <laughs> so hopefully eight coasters is enough. But I, I don't know. You never know. Um, yep, now my husband has no excuse, right, Michael? No excuse. Put your cup on a cup, on a coaster, on a cup holder. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, so the pattern is called Buffalo Check Coasters. It's, uh, free on Ravelry. You can go download a copy for yourself. I include video links in the pattern. Uh, and you can also find the videos here on YouTube. Um, while I did create these videos with this pattern in mind, they should also be helpful if you're just, um, if you're double knitting something else, right? Um, so, yep, I love them. They're, <laughs> they're really nice. Uh, and so I made mine out of uh, acrylic yarn. I have a lot of acrylic yarn in my stash. This is worsted weight. Um, I've got Red Heart. I have um, Ho Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. Uh, I forget which brand this tobacco colorway is. But they're all 100% acrylic. Um, so they're easy to throw in the washing machine when they inevitably get coffee stains on them and they won't shrink and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, they're just really easy to whip up in a day. I made three coasters a day for two days and then two of these in a day and they're just quick and easy. So if you're wanting quick and easy 
something useful. It could be a cute little gift for someone, uh, throw in a gift basket or something. Um, yeah, they're, I like them and I hope you like them too. <laughs> okay, that's enough about that. <laughs> so after our house guests left <laughs> and we had the house to ourselves again, I found this sweater vest pattern and I just went crazy. I just, we had come back from a, you know, three week long vacation, spending lots of time with family, having a week to ourselves, and then having family over again for a necessary component. But I just felt drained. Like, I needed to recharge my batteries, have some time to myself, just not doing anything, not being social, just, yeah, vegging out, watching TV and knitting. So that's what I did. <laughs> um, so I found this pattern on Ravelry and I put it in my library a while ago. So I was you know, I'd finish socks, I'd finish coasters, I was looking for something else to do, and I wasn't ready to tackle my works in progress, the pile I have, and I just wanted some, I just wanted some inspiration. So I saw this pattern in my library, and I thought, okay, yeah, I'm doing that. So <laughs> the pattern is Timbo Vest, and... Uh, <laughs> It's just adorable. I mean, it's it doesn't have sleeves, so it should be quick to work up. It's just the, the two colors. It looks very flattering. So I wanted to use up some more of my acrylic yarn. And so that's what I did. <laughs> now I say I wanted to use up some acrylic yarn. I did have to go get more of this and I went and bought the green. So I actually added to my stash <laughs> when I was trying to stash down. But um, yeah, so this is uh, Red Heart. Mm, I don't know if you can really see. The colorway is Aaron Fleck. So it's this cream color with, um, it's like, Tweety bits of black and brown in here, which I think is really nice. And then the green is from Hobby Lobby. This is a dark olive. So I actually <laughs> made this um, and then I used some leftovers in the coasters. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's super cute. So it is knit top down which after my mellow cardigan fiasco, fiasco being that the thing is mega long and huge now, um, uh, I really was searching for something top down so that I could try it on as I went. And um, yeah, here it is. It is, uh, the pattern does call for, oh yeah, that's right. The pattern calls for bulky, chunky, I think it's chunky. No, I don't know. It's one of those two words. So what I did is I held, I did have to do, um, some adjustments to the pattern. So I held two strands of worsted weight yarn together to knit this. So I did not match gauge. Uh, so what I did is I knit a size smaller. And I was also seeing in the pattern notes that a lot of people were saying it was kind of too big. And so they were going down a size. So I went down, I think a couple sizes. Uh, but yeah, there it is. It's so cool. So you knit it, um, from the, the top down. And so you, you start in the round here and then you go, um, flat 
and flat. See, now I thought the pattern would have you like join in the round here and knit in the round, but no, it has you go flat. And so since um, we were doing that, I saw some people did the, the split hem, split hem, split seam. Oh my gosh, I don't know terms. Um, so I just went with it. So I went ahead and knit the two front and back flat and sewed them together. And then that way I could leave this as a flap. Um, but yeah, it's a broken rib stitch pattern. Super easy. Um, let's see if I can try this thing on. Okay. <sighs> so I have trouble with turtlenecks. I just, oh, I can't stand it. It sets off my gag reflex and I'm just coughing all day long. So I was uh, quite nervous about knitting this, but because the acrylic yarn held double, um, it just, it stands up very nicely. I can, you know, pull it away from my neck. It's not a big deal. It's not pinching me. It has plenty of space here. So I do absolutely love that. I love the shoulder, how the, the stockinette stitch just comes down. It's so clever, the construction, I think. Um, I love the two colors. Um, I think it breaks it up a bit. I think it would also look nice in one color, but I just needed this green in my life. And so it does hug me. I thought it was going to be looser than this, but it is not because the top is very loose, you know? But after that, I did add a couple more stitches here than what the pattern called for, but it still hugs me, <laughs> which I guess is okay. And so I've got my split there. It is quite warm. Um, so definitely something I'm not going to wear until it's, you know, 50 degrees or cooler. <laughs> so this will just go in the closet for now. Uh, but yeah, I love it. And I whipped this up in three days. Okay, so after knitting that sweater vest in three days, <laughs> I felt very energized to tackle a languishing sweater whip. So I have a pile of project bags that has just been languishing and growing and there's this sweater I love that I started in April 2020 so right near the start of the pandemic um, yeah we were quarantined at home and I started this project I had planned for this project and, and you know before the pandemic was a thing got everything all set up started it and then because we were with you know I don't know about you but I thought in two weeks this will all blow over and we'll be back to work and everything will be fine now we know differently but <laughs> did not go down that way but <laughs> so yeah I got through um, I got through the color work and then stopped because uh, it was very evident that um, teaching from home wasn't going away and I needed to figure out all of the online stuff. Plus I was writing my first year tenure document, like evaluating myself and, and what I did and I wrote about, <laughs> yeah, um, that's when this went into the uh, whip pile and it didn't come out for two and a half years. So. <laughs> 
yeah I just did not have the headspace for this thing so this pattern is dark water by Jennifer Steingast and it's, it's so beautiful it's finished it's finished y'all oh my gosh <laughs> I love it so much okay first of all I don't think this is to gauge and I don't really care <laughs> um, so <laughs> there's that but just look at how that is coming across on camera I mean it's just amazing so the yarn is um, they're both cloud born um, hang on I have left over of the gray see I didn't even use a full skein of the gray there is a lot left over here so this is Cloudborn Fibers Highland Fingering so it is a hundred percent fine Highland wool so this definitely cannot go in the washing machine oops um, the blue colorway is stormy skies and the gray is gray heather. The gray is spelled with an E. Oh, I wonder what the history is on gray with an A versus gray with an E. Anyway. Oh my god, it's amazing. So what I did, so there were a couple things going on with this sweater as to why I wasn't working on it. One of the reasons was um, we were working like 60 hour weeks from home because everything took way longer than it would have had we done things in person. Um, so it, I just didn't have the time, energy, headspace to, to work on this thing. The other reason is that um, I was using my tablet to um, and, and, an, and an app that lets you write on PDFs to keep track of where I was in this pattern, right? Um, that tablet doesn't really work anymore. <laughs> and I was like, shit, I have no idea where I am in this pattern without that tablet. like. I wasn't completely done with the color work. I knew I was close to the end, but I didn't know where I was. And so we had to do tablet surgery. He didn't, Michael didn't open it up, but he figured out how to get my tablet to take a charge. It wasn't, it had completely died and it wouldn't take a charge. He figured out how to fix that. Then I accidentally let it die again. Anyway. So we were keeping that tablet alive just so I could get this pattern off of there and figure out where I was in my progress. It's an app that is local to the device so it doesn't like, if I download the app on my phone, it won't retrieve those files. And anyway, so I finally got around to dealing with the tablet, getting that off there, getting into a space where I felt like I can knit a sweater again and so I finished it so the biggest languishing whip is done and I'm so excited so um this uh has been uh, blocked this is the sweater that I laid outside and in four hours it was dry crazy um, so let me try this on. I haven't tried this on since I blocked it. So let's see how this goes. Okay, first impression putting it on is thank God it isn't like super crazy long. Oh gosh, it's just right. And the sleeves as well are just right. So, oh yeah, I wove in the ends, but I didn't cut them because I wanted to wait till I blocked it. So now I can cut those. <gasps> okay, second thought is I kind of have like poofy 80s sleeves here. So if I could figure out 
how to pull the neckline in a bit there from the shoulders. See that? Poofy. But see, my color work was not, it's, I have a lot of extra fabric here that I don't need because I, I don't think this is to gauge. But are you freaking kidding me? Look at this. <gasps> I can't wait to wear this. This is so pretty, y'all. Even with the puffy sleeves, I don't even give a crap. Like, it is so cool. By the way, where I was, was like right here. Like, all I had to do were these little flecks down here. That's it. That's where I was. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Oh, so all I had to do was pick that up, finish those. It was like four rounds of th that. And then it was just all blue. Just knit, 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 knit. Yep. Love it. So cool. Neither of those sweaters did I do a gauge swatch for. Yeah. So the mellow cardigan, which the sleeves are too long and I need to fix, I did do a gauge swatch for. But neither of these, yeah. Um, I'm figuring out that the swa gauge swatching is important. And I need to do it. <laughs> Just FYI. Um, so, let's see. I have three whips that I'm looking at right now in the basket that I need to, um, two of them I need to, I think, just frog them is what I'm gonna do. And the other one is a pair of socks that I knit the first one, but not the second one. So I need to knit the second one. <laughs> so I'll tackle those at some point. But in the meantime, I did cast on a new project. And before I cast on, I knit a swatch. Yeah. So um, this is uh, Baby B Sweet Delight. This is from Hobby Lobby. It is 60% acrylic, 40% polyamide. The color is Baby Red. Now, pink is my least favorite color, but this color, it's, I feel like it's more pink than the way it's showing up on screen, but uh, I like this. And I really wanted to knit a sweater out of this or a top, but I can't find this color. This is number 32, baby red, and I can't find it. I can find 33, which is little princess, which is pink, and I don't want that. It doesn't look good on me. And I can find like a more of a red color, not, not like this red, this red is nice. Um, I mean, this is baby yarn, so they're thinking like pastels and whatnot for babies. But um, anyway, so I knit the swatch and I went online and then I went in the store and I just can't find it. I cannot find this color, but I love it. So I knit the swatch and I went to the store and... I picked out a different color, uh, but out of the same yarn. So I've used this yarn before. I really like it. Um, and yeah, I was just really hoping for like a bright color. And part of the reason I was thinking that is because the pattern uses a bright color and it looks amazing. It, it looks summery and fun and I really wanted to do that, but eh, I couldn't find a color that was gonna complement my skin tone, go with my wardrobe and, and all that good stuff. 
that was bright and whoo so I went more subtle so let me go grab um, my new whip from the living room so I can show you <laughs> so Michael and I went to Hobby Lobby there is a new Hobby Lobby that opened up near me they've been working on it and it's finally open I no longer have to drive an hour to get to Hobby Lobby I'm very excited <laughs> So, uh, so we went, checked it out, and I was surprised to see that they even had clearance at a brand new Hobby Lobby. Um, so I'm, I'm going to show you this first, and then I'll show you my project. Uh, but what my project is living in currently is a basket <laughs> that was in the clearance section. It was 90% off. So this was like a dollar two dollars something like that it was crazy uh, <laughs> so, whatever it's living in there and I'm uh, you know getting all those happy vibes from finding a great deal so what I did settle on instead of super bright and happy summer to cool summer nights <laughs> which is not the name of the colorway, uh, but it's white with um, speckles that are uh, navy blue, uh, teal, and gray. Yeah, it's gray. It's almost like a grayish brown, but mostly gray. So it's got these wonderful specks in it. So I don't normally wear light colors. I don't know if you've noticed that on this podcast at all. I'm almost always wearing dark color. Um, so this is different. But because of the style of the top, like I said, it's kind of summery. So I didn't want it to be this dark, heavy thing. I wanted it to be light and, and fun. So I went with this. And... So the pattern is called Graceful Waves Tunic Sweater, and it's a free pattern. I love free patterns. <laughs> um, so I did get gauge with the number of stitches, uh, but my number of rows is off, and it's only off by like a row in um in the four inches so or two rows something like that but the way the pattern is written it's knit until it measures this many inches so it's fine <laughs> um the only part where i'd really have to worry about that is in the lacy bit at the bottom and i don't need that to be exactly the right length right so Uh, downside, this is a bottom-up sweater. Yeah, I know. Here we go again. But I really like it, so I'm just going to knit it. So, <laughs> uh, I did wait for a week. By the way, guys, if you shop at Hobby Lobby, every other week is when the yarn is 30% off. I'm pretty sure that's the pattern. So I waited till all yarn was 30% off and bought this. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so it's got another one of these split, I need to figure out what this is called. Split hem, split seam. I don't care. Um, I really like how these look. And I hope they work with, it's not like I have a lot of these in my wardrobe that split. Um, but I have kind of a big booty, so it is nice if I can get that little extra room for my booty and not have to be knitting a lot more, having more fabric, just have that style to it. So we'll see. Um, I mean, if the way it looks is going to be like, I'm stretched wide open, then it's not very flattering. So, um, but this pattern calls for having eight inches of positive ease 
so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> um, so you knit the the lacy bit for the front and the back separately, and then you join and just knit in the round till you get to the armhole. Then you'll split, knit the front, knit the back, and then join it together for the for the top. There's no shaping. It's super easy. It's a tube. I think I can handle it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm just knitting, knitting, knitting and really enjoying myself. And I really like this color choice. I was going to buy yarn for two of these tops, but I couldn't find a second color that I really loved. And so I just bought yarn for the one and I will, when I'm finished with this, and my hope is that I absolutely love this top and I want to knit another one. That's when I'll go back and pick out another color. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to work just fine. Um, blues and grays are definitely right up my alley and go with my wardrobe. So I think this is going to be really nice. Now, excuse me, because this is, you know, acrylic yarn, it's not like blocking is going to do much to help me with this curling up, but I am going to try uh, a bit of something. Um, but yeah, um, I'm using the needles called for in the pattern, which is a US 4, and uh, I'm just knitting round and round and I love it. So that's my focus right now is this project. I do have another pair of socks on the needles, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I didn't, I didn't like how it was knitting up before, so I ripped it back and started over. Uh, I'm not sure where I set that project down. I'll show you next time. It's not very far along. Uh, but I decided to make shorty stock socks instead of big, long, tall socks. Um, just because of the way the yarn is working up and stuff, I think I'd rather have them as shorties. So I did frog and start over uh, one of my whips. So I'm feeling pretty good about actually producing items and finishing them, which I don't know about you, but I have a I have trouble with. <laughs> Starting them, no problem. Finishing them, problem. So I feel pretty um, happy, like I have a high from finishing two sweaters in a month. I mean, that's pretty awesome. So hopefully I can ride that wave of momentum and just carry it through. Um, the project I know that I'm going to frog, I'm just going to frog it probably while editing this episode so that I can just get it done and empty that bag. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels good to, to clean up, tidy up, actually put things in my wardrobe. Um, school is going to start this month now that it's September and so I've got some new wardrobe pieces once it gets cooler. That's fun. Um, yeah, so I'm excited and that's all I have for the crafty stuff. So I think I need to figure out this giveaway. So for the giveaway, <laughs> so for July, I said I would give away a digital pattern prize. Uh, so basically a pattern on Ravelry. Uh, it'll be, the pattern will be the choice of the winner. And so the winner can choose any pattern that's 10 US dollars or less. And I will buy that pattern to add to your Ravelry library. Because we all can use more patterns, right? <laughs> Uh, so, since this video is for July and August, I'm going to choose two winners from the comments on the June video, June makes video, uh, and those two winners are going to win um, these prizes, right? So each of you get to choose a pattern on Ravelry, send me the uh, name of the pattern and the designer's name is helpful as well, so I make sure I get the right one. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I will gift you that pattern. So the winners are 
drum roll, yep. Uh, Nancy Morales, who I have met in person, Nancy. Um, congratulations on your retirement. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Honestly, I can't wait to retire. I wish I could do it right now. <laughs> um, I hope you had an awesome summer and that you still are having an awesome summer um, down there in Texas. I complain about the heat here, but I know y'all have it a lot worse than I do. Um, I hope it was fantastic. Um, so Nancy, let me know which pattern you would like. And then our second winner is Linda C. And Linda C. said she was going to uh, Virginia Beach with family. And I hope that was awesome because that is definitely behind us now. End of July is gone. <laughs> um, so uh, if both of you could send me a message on Ravelry. Again, let me know which pattern you would like me to add to your library. I am a Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry, and you can find uh, all that information down below in the description box for where you can find me, how you can reach me, and all that good stuff. Um, so congratulations to our July and August winners. Getting my months mixed up here. So... For September because uh, in the next video I'm gonna do another giveaway well the next end of the month video I should say I may put out more videos um, <laughs> so for the September giveaway I'm gonna give away a physical item this time and that is going to be one of my bags so um, I'd like to get back into sewing bags again because that was really fun <laughs> I feel like now that we're in our uh, home and we're not renting anymore, it'd be nice to get all that set up again. But um, I did, way back when, play around with kind of uh, almost quilting on a bag. So uh, I've got different fabric here. And so I pulled out of the colors of this little girl here and her fox and they're both holding balloons and so I've got that on both sides here so this is a nice little project bag it has a boxed bottom on it I love this size this has got to be one of my favorite sizes it's perfect for um, a pair of socks or um, a shawl in its beginning stages, but like a one skein project fits super nicely in here. So I've got a zipper and it's lined on the inside. So this is what I'm gonna give away next month. So the prompt for commenting for the giveaway is what is your favorite season? Um, yeah, I, I'm curious what what your favorite season is and why. Um, and that's all you have to comment. Feel free to share more or less or comment on something different. But I feel like it's helpful to have a prompt so you have something to say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll tell you my favorite season is fall. Uh... I'm uh, I'm a teacher. I love school. I've always loved school. Uh, it was always my favorite time of year as a kid, going back to school. Plus, there's my birthday, my sister's birthday, Halloween, and Thanksgiving. So there are a lot of holidays in fall of lots of family get-togethers and celebrating and things to be happy for. The leaves changing colors, all the candy of Halloween. <laughs> it's just fun. It's got a lot of fun stuff. I feel like it's the time of year for new beginnings um, rather than the new year. I feel like fall is really when I'm like, okay, this year, because for me, I'm on the school years, right? This year, I'm going to do this. And so it's like turning over a new leaf. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but I do miss all of those fall colors uh, in Michigan. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. I definitely look at lots of pictures on Instagram and Facebook of 
professional photographers taking pictures in Michigan of all the leaves turning colors. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, you get out of the hot weather into the cooler weather. Uh, you get to bundle up and wear all your hand knits. And it's just, yeah, fall has got to be my favorite season for all of those reasons. <laughs> So comment down below, let me know uh, what your favorite season is and why. And if you don't want to answer that prompt, comment about anything. It's totally cool. And then next month, I will randomly draw, uh, uh, pick one of those comments, and that person will win this project bag. So, uh, yay! I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you all have a fantastic September. Um, if you're going back to school or if you have kids who are going back to school or siblings or whoever, um, I hope they have a great school year. Um, let's hope this year is better than it has been in the past, that we can actually have some consistency. <laughs> A uh, lot less stress and worry and just put all our energy and efforts into, you know, getting back to uh, the community of learning instead of feeling like we're all on our own. Can you tell how I've been feeling over the past two years? Really isolated. <laughs> so um, I hope you all have a great month and I'll see you next time. Bye.